that was a, that was a pretty cool moment. Um, you know, just to hear you know that you took the time to, to just kind of reach out to me after reading this book and to kind of share your heart. Can you give me a little bit of background on how you got the book and what kind of uh, kind of inspired you to dig into it? Well, I've been fairly close with a guy named Todd Blackledge, a former great player at Penn State, national champ, and uh, um, then I work with at ESPN, and and we 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 share some thoughts. And, and one day he said, "You know, I got a book for you." He's a high school basketball coach in the off season, <clears throat> and he said, "You know, I got a book for you." And he, he actually, I went to Ohio for a golf outing, and he he handed me the book, and it was during the spring when I was going around to visit some places, and I. I started reading it and I couldn't put it down. It was one of those books that I finished in a day or two. And I was making the trip to Stanford to meet with Andrew Luck. And I finished the book on the plane and uh, it, it hit me real hard. You know, it was uh, the whole, the whole storyline, the, the message. And I woke up real early, a little bit from jet lag, but also from excitement. And I just went for a run and walked about there from 8, 5 a.m. to about 8 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, and I said, you know what, I'm going to reach out to this guy. And that's when I said to the email and uh, just told you how, what an impact that book had on me. We spoke about before, uh, I never intended to write this thing as a parable. Um, I had all these, you know, the outline laid out and all the points that I was going to make in a normal leadership book. Well, uh, God had a different plan and it just started flowing out as this story. And... Um, these characters came out of nowhere. Um, but as you spoke, uh, or you talked to me earlier and, and, and shared with me kind of how when you started to read it, it, it really just kind of grabbed your attention. Talk about these characters and what about them kind of jumped out at you. Well, if you put on that book that that's a real life story, everybody would buy it because that is real life. That's every one of those characters from Joe to Coach Rocker to Grant. I mean, how many of us know a Grant? Uh, how many of us fall into the Grant syndrome? How many mm -hmm. of us fall into the point where Coach Rocker knocks the Gatorade uh, bottle over, then the next day his kid gets, you know, he loses control as well because the coaches have such an impact on the guys. And, and then Joe, I, I think all of us at some point know a Joe, you know, mm -hmm. uh, a guy that uh, about as unselfish, uh, selfless as you can be. And uh, it, what hit me is I know those people. I mean, I, I can go shake hands with Joe and know exactly who he is, and I can look in the mirror and see Coach Rocker. I can, uh, I can go shake hands with some friends that have had some turmoil in their life as far as the business family, and that's the grant. And so that, that's the thing that uh, I'm, not, I'm not sure I've ever read a book where I was in that, bu I was in that book. And that's mm -hmm. when I emailed you and said, that, you know, you ought to change the name on that guy during that during that, uh, some of those hard times, and then stick. Uh, I got another name you can stick in there. Again, this is a question that has, um, for years and years, been near and dear to my heart. Uh, I, I wish I had it perfected, but it's it's a question of uh, why do we do what we do, and the deepest motives of the heart, and and really, these guys get to the point of really digging deep into that question and. and why should we be asking this? Um, what's your thoughts on that question and how important it is, uh, not just in athletics, but in leadership in any capacity today? When you see failure or when you see confusion, which often leads to failure, is because you're not asking that question hmm. and uh, the why. Why am I doing this? And if it's anything other than the purest motives, it's some, you'll, you'll, you'll survive for a while. You know, you can surround yourself with really quality people and survive, survive. But at the end of the day, the foundation's not there. And if the why is not a pure why, not a, a fundamental human, you know, uh, the way we are created to be, if it's not the right answer, at some point, cracks will start to show up and you'll see a foundation and, and uh, something start to happen. And uh, I think anybody, anybody that reads that book and the people I've spoken to, who have read it, uh, I've, I've already given out a bunch of them, by the way, thanks for those copies, but everybody hits me back with the same thing, that, and I make sure I give it to people who are deep thinkers. You know, you're not gonna get, for someone who's not a deep thinker, that'll be sitting on a shelf somewhere. For someone who's a deep thinker and about the why, about mm -hmm. the relationship, 
there'll be a point where you're in the middle of the book and you'll put the book, book down and say, I got to rethink this thing. Hmm. When you uh, reached out to me, both in the email and then even when we had some conversations afterwards, you talked about just the significance of purpose in leadership and, and your experiences um, moving through, obviously, some tremendous, tremendous success along the way. Um, talk a little bit about purpose and uh, the kind of impact that's had on you, on your players, and, and your leadership. Well, when, when uh, a person makes a decision when you're 21 years old and, and make a career decision, what do you want to do? And I was engaged at the time and said, I want to be a coach. Why did I want to be a coach? Uh, coaches weren't making money at all. Uh, so that take that completely out of the equation. Uh, never in your wildest dreams did you think that you know, you'd know move up the ladder as fast. That was not the purpose. The purpose mm -hmm. was my love of the game of football and what football ultimately teaches people that need these lessons. My, my kid's going through it right now. I got a 12-year-old boy <clears throat> that's playing football. The lessons taught on football about get hit right square in the mouth and you got to pick yourself up and you got to have people around you picking you up and the lessons learned and the relationships with your coach. I, I was very fortunate. My, my relationship with my high school coaches growing up was, it couldn't have been better. Mm. Uh, and I tried to give that same thing when I was an assistant coach for 15, 16, 17 years, whatever it was, and then as a head coach. And uh, at the end of the day, you go back to the why. Why are you in it? If it is about the purest form, about relationships, about the impact you can make on someone, especially a profession like coaching, usually you have great success. And I'm not talking about wins and losses. In, in society today, um, success is defined for us. I mean, in, in anything that we're pursuing, it's getting to the top, it's wins and losses, it's money. It's some of the things you were mentioning, that, the reasons you didn't get into it. Um, talk a little bit about, again, you know, as you think of Urban Meyer's life moving forward, um, has, how has this shaped the definition of success or how you think about going into things and defining success right from the start in maybe a, a different way or, or getting back more to the roots or how does that well, not to get, not, thinking? Not to give away the book, but Coach Rocker went through the, you know, he got into it for relationship. He started to have great success mm -hmm. and also he could become the winningest coach in Kentucky basketball history. And it started to change who he was. And I, without getting too much into my personal life, but it, it began to change who I was. Every Thursday night, for as long as I can remember, we would have players over th during the season. Uh, that was the greatest time of the week. Every Thursday after practice, my wife and children would show up to practice and all the other families would show up. We'd have a uh, victory meal on Mondays and when we won, and, and those things were really the, the foundation of it. It was all about relationship. We had church service where all the families were invited. Mm. And you, for whatever reason, that started to change. And I say for whatever reason is because the leader started to worry about other things uh, because of the great success we had, because of other issues that I was dealing with, as opposed to going back to the why. And the why overrules everything. If you keep your focus on the why and the relationship, then everything else will take care of itself. And if it doesn't, that's fine, because the focus has to be the why and the relationship. There's a, there's a lot of people, as they look at this book, it's obviously, it's a sports story. But one, one of the coolest things in my experience through this is, has been people that have read it coming back to me going, it's a sports story, but it's a story about life. It really isn't. It, it is, but it, it's much, you know, much more broad-based than that. Um, what are your thoughts on, on who needs to read this book um, that can be most impacted by it? I, I disagree with that. I don't, I, that's not a sports story. That's a life story. That's a, that's a purpose story. That's a, who should read it. That's probably, I'm a little biased. I, everybody should read that. Mm -hmm. And I've told people, I mean, uh, Shelly, my wife, is going to read it, you know, and my son's going to read it. Uh, there's no question. And it's not a sports book. It's a book about people, but it goes back to the two most, you know, the two questions that we talked about, the purpose and relationship. And, uh, and at the end of the day, whether you're a doctor, lawyer, or you know, teacher, whatever you are, at the end of the day, if you can ask yourself why, and probably the, the hardest part is, and be honest with your answer, mm. not just why and then some frivolous answer. This is all between yourself. If you can ask that question why, and it comes back 
pure, you know, pure form, then you're doing the right thing. If it's, if you got a little confusion about that, then you better reevaluate. Mm -hmm. And that's what that book makes you do is reevaluate. Mm -hmm. Well, Coach, uh, as I said, man, it's been an, an honor. Um, just to, to get to hear your, your thoughts on this and, and to get to talk to you from time to time now. I certainly appreciate you taking the time to chat a little bit about the book, too. Well, so. thanks for writing that book. That uh, made a major, not very often can I say things have impacted my life as much as that book, and appreciate you doing it. Awesome. Thanks, Coach. All right, bud.